Hello, everybody. Today I'd like to give you some update about the Ruby build. The good news, we're almost here with all components we need. We have a lot of weather cooling sponsorship items coming in. Whatever is not covered, we can easily cover through the Dasmod store. It's only still gripe point is the electronics, but it's almost here. So we have a GPUs already arrived from AMD, I told you last time. And I also I think I mentioned that we have a G-Skill RAM DDR4. Uh, just recently we got our 5930K. Of course, could be nicer to have top of the crop, but for budgetary re reasons we just cannot do it. And I think it will work just fine for our purposes. And the uh, really big thing that happened end of last week, we got a private donation from our customer with this massive EVJ 1600 watts power supply. And that thing saved us probably two weeks time because we're trying to accumulate some funds and purchase items. And when I figured out after speaking to AMD that the minimum power requirement for two GPUs like this is 1500 watts, while I only have a 1250 watt power supply in hand, I figured out, oh my God, so the project will be run even longer because now in addition to whatever I'm missing, I also need this massive power supply, which is not particularly cheap. So it was uh, very unexpected and uh, very nice to get this donation. I also have uh, some cash donations that also help us to push things forward. So the only thing that's left is motherboard that I will hopefully get uh, next week. And after that also water cooling starts things started to arriving and we actually can start building. But for now, because we have a pause on the way, we can talk about loop planning. Because that exercise I already had to do, because when I was asking for some sponsorship support, I was asked for a list, so I had to estimate it. So I will try to speak out today how I did my estimation. It's my own methodology that I'm using for most of my builds. And um, I don't know, is it best or not? You've more than welcome to share how you do it in the comments uh, but uh, if it works for you I'm happy to share it's nothing proprietary here in most situations all you need just piece of paper pen or whiteboard and you can draw your system and make a best guess what you can do for simple type of builds that most of people is doing when you have a just tower case with uh, let's say a radiator on the top you have your motherboard and you let's say we would like to cool CPU and have a GPU and let's say cylindrical reservoir with a pump. The drawing is really easy and calculation is really easy because all we can need to do, let's say we're going from the GPU to the pump and um, from the pump, let's say we go to radiator and from radiator to CPU and back, right? So we get our loop on and all is required is just calculate number of fittings. If you use flexible tube, you don't even need angle adapters, although it wouldn't be looking nice, but all you need just say, calculate number of fittings and uh, get a bunch of tubes so you can bend it and connect it together. If you would like to go next step, you, you would like maybe to look on some angle adapters, so tubes runs will be not as loopy and they, they will be a little bit more straight. And then you try to do more like 3D projection of how the parts located in your case and you can say okay maybe from C CPU it will be nicer to have a 45 degree adapter and here 45 degree adapter so the line will be nicer and uh, from GPU bottom GPU obviously 90 degree adapter makes sense so we, we're facing towards this uh, pump reservoir combo instead of going loop direction so it just with a little practice you figure it out pretty quick if you have a trouble it's advisable just to if you have if you have your case already on hand try to look inside of the case and this help you to understand that's a similar situation that I actually run in this particular Ruby build because I try to start drawing things but because it's a cube case so it's not really a flat type of configuration it's more like 3d and parts has moved against each other quite a bit. So I tried to draw it and actually I failed because my processing power in my head, uh, I couldn't visualize it properly. So so before I actually come up with uh, with designs that I did, I had to make a little mock-up of my system in uh, inside of, of the case. Thankfully I have it. And I'd like to show you 
what exactly I did and how it helped me to calculate number of fittings and guess which angle adapters I would like to use. As soon as I realized that I simply cannot put a 3D map in my head, I decided to make a mock-up build inside of the case so I can understand and line up things a little bit better. Also, I never built a rigid tube or hard tube type of build before, so I'm in the same boat as many of you guys that try to do something for the first time. So who could know how things will go and what kind of uh, components you need. But we're trying to do the best under the circumstances. First of all, uh, you need to look what kind of components you, you you will be water cool, so you understand what is your radiator power is required. In my case, we have a quad crossfire, we have a CPU and whatever rest we possibly can do. So absolute bare minimum for uh, four GPUs and one CPU is a five core radiator. So I could go with a triple and, and dual, but we would like to get a little bit of headroom and maybe run a little bit, not as loud because we have a little bit more radiator power. So two triples is a good choice. Now, as, as I know that I need two triples, I need to figure out with a given case where the hell I can put it. And this is one position possible, another position, third position, and even fourth position in the front if I want to. So my selection, originally when we discussed it with case labs, we decided to put one radiator on top and one radiator in the bottom chamber. So that's already gave me a position of two radiators and I already know when my ports will be. It's either here or here because you can put radiators this way or just reverse at 180 degrees. As soon as that will get out of the way, I just pull whatever motherboard I could find and put it in place so that give me position of uh, CPU and obviously now I see that approximately my GPU will be located no need to stick GPUs here just you, you already know it's here so it's good enough to make estimation and with that out of the way the really last part that left was figure out what kind of reservoir and um, where the hell we put it down so I decided that I will definitely go for reservoir and pop combo. I don't want to have too many connections. It's already over complicated type of the build in a small case. Obviously makes sense, couple pumps and two reservoirs. My initial inclination was, I, I thought to put two reservoirs right on dual uh, bits power uh, pump top. But after a few, <laughs> attempts trying to position it or seeing how I put it inside the case I figured out that actually it's not supported configuration you can't have two you can't have only one you can have two pumps but there is a row only one so for that reason I opted to the two separate single pump and reservoir of combos next to each other and this I will have extra reservoir which really serves no purpose but it just works for me because I think it looks cool and also because it just lines up with the idea of the loop I would like to achieve. So, and again, the, the only places for tube reservoir is either put it here or maybe on the, the small version on this shelf. And uh, I decided to go for the bigger one and uh, put those uh, reservoir and pump combo right here. So now basically I'm pretty much done. So I have one radiator in top position another radiator on the bottom chamber I will have my CPU block here two pump reservoir combos sitting in that cutout right there and uh, two GPUs so at that point I already started understanding a little bit how the parts is will be positioned in the space and um, that's allowed me to come back to the whiteboard and start drawing things quite ugly way but at least to give me some idea how things is located and after that I can create the fittings. Okay, now I hope you can make sense of whatever this uh, cryptic thing I put on, uh, on the whiteboard here. So we have this, this is my top radiator, this is my bottom chamber radiator and uh, this is motherboard tray flat but I have to put it down because I would like to check quite a few things here. This is my two graphical cards and two reservoirs. 
sitting on the bottom of the case. So the next thing I start doing is I was working between this picture and the case itself and try to visualize and see how things position against each other and try to guess is it straight line of acrylic tube going or it will be bent uh, tube or it probably will be 90 degree adapter. And all I did, I start putting pot numbers on, um, on the whiteboard and just trying to complete the loop. So let's say if I, I go from the top radiator straight down and um, I just need a straight fitting here and after that it's probably 90 degree adapter with two fittings on, attached to them. Although I potentially can bend tube, but let's say I'd like to do a, not a tube bending, I just use a fitting for this. And after that you go to the pump and you have another fitting in um, on the pump top. So all you do, you just say, okay, this is part number here and we have one here, two fittings, two more, 90 degree adapter, one new part number, another fitting, fifth fitting. And you go and just make a check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark until you complete your loop the best way you could. And in the end, this is your list. I guarantee you that it will be close to the final list, but it wouldn't be final list by any means because probably certain things I think will work, probably will not. And so we have to play on the fly and uh, that potentially can trigger different kind of fittings. But this is the best case scenario you can do. As you can see, this is kind of a, an advanced build. I, I, I want to think at least the type of advanced build. So it's a little bit more complicated than this, this type of build that customer number one build we had, which is it's big and expensive, but nevertheless, the loop layout is pretty simple. So it depends how much you put you up to, that's how difficult to draw it, how difficult to calculate, but it's quite doable and give you at least some estimation. One thing in the end I would like to mention that one thing that get quite often overlooked, you connect your loop and in the end, realistically, this is complicated picture, but realistically, this is just this. It's just a loop, which is, uh, um, in fact, is bending a lot of time, but realistically, it's a loop. But when you finish your loop, uh, quite often people forget to put necessities such as a drain port, which is you need basically to break your loop and make a little appendix. Oh, you can see it. <laughs> so you need to break your loop and make appendix so you can a little bit uh, spill your water when you need to change it or when you're testing things so you'd like to change color of your liquid, things like this. So uh, don't forget to put this type of fittings. All right, so that's basically the situation. Uh, nothing I can do until I receive all parts. I put them in a case and actually try to route tube itself so I can verify my theory is it correct or not. But uh, it's a good start and definitely doable type of configuration as I see it now. We'll see pretty soon in the next videos how many mistakes we did and how many more fittings we would need to buy if we, if we will. That's for that reason I'm not going to erase it. I still have a list, I have my picture and uh, if necessary, we will review it and see what exactly worked and what is not. All right, guys, I hope it's somewhat helpful. It's hard to explain certain things. I try my best. And um, if somebody get better idea, my mission accomplished.